Hi, my name is Heidi, this is my dog Porter, and this is my bus Wayfinder. I decided to go on the road because I lost my job due to COVID and I've always wanted to explore other places in the US and what better way to do that but in a bus. So this is my kitchen. Um, most of it is reclaimed. I bought all these cabinets at Habitat for Humanity, refinished them, added new hardware. And my upper cabinets are old toilet paper towers for bathrooms just turned sideways. But I went with a cooktop because it's just me and I have a stovetop oven that goes on top. Pretty happy with my decision because, um, you know, like I said, it's just me and I think it works really well for one person. And I went with a nice big sink, but this was also from Habitat. It was originally a double, and I cut it down into a single. And it's nice and deep, so I can do dishes and wash clothes and whatnot whenever I want. So I definitely would like more organization underneath the cabinets. I definitely have all of my pots and pans and dishes under there, but it's all just kind of thrown in at this point. So I would love to make some kind of like double racked situation that can contain everything because everything online is just flat and obviously when you're traveling things fall off of flat surfaces. So I would like to add some more organization underneath the cabinets. I carry a 20 pound tank of propane and it's on my back deck and I have a line run to this cooktop and then I have a line run to my water heater in the back. So far it has lasted me over a month but I'm very sparing with the propane that I do use. I don't always like use hot water for washing dishes and whatnot because I think you can get them just as clean with cold. <laughs> this is kind of my junk drawer right here. It houses all of my little stuff that I want to access quickly. I don't have my overhead lights wired into my battery system yet. So I do have all of my battery operated lights in here, string lights, fairy lights, scissors, magnets, Anything that I need to access quickly is in this drawer. My AC, remote, all of that. So um, I have a small fridge. It is pretty efficient. Unfortunately, I can't use it right now because I don't have solar or an inverter yet for my 110 outlets and components. But hopefully in a few weeks, I will be going to Schooly Swarm and I'll be able to get solar installed. But something that I do love is my riser that also doubles as a dog bowl storage. Um, it helps lift the refrigerator up off the ground so I'm not crouching into it, and it also gives Porter's Dish a place to live. So I hit the road a week ago. I came all the way to Schoolypalooza in Arizona from North Carolina and it has been a ride this week, but you know, I've gotten the trial by fire for bus life and hopefully in the future, I have more smooth sailing and I'm looking at potentially doing some seasonal work up in Alaska this summer. So I'm hoping to maybe take the bus up to Denali National Park and work for an adventure company. So initially when I started looking for the bus, I just kept scouring Facebook Marketplace for weeks and weeks and I finally found the bus and I went down to get it and I got her for about $3,600. And throughout the build, I knew that my budget was kind of 10 grand, but um, with the cost of building materials due to COVID and everything, it was a little bit over budget, but all in I'm about at $15,000, not including solar, but I tried to reuse where I could and I think that saved me a lot of money in the long run. So this is my shower space. I had to add this shower bubble above me because I kept the original ceiling so it gives me an extra five inches in order to stand up and actually use my shower. I went with just birch plywood walls and I sealed them with spar urethane, 11 coats sprayed, and I also painted this um, snake all the way across all three walls of the shower. And yeah, it's worked pretty good. I've used it several times and it's bigger than the one that was in my house. Okay, so this is my toilet area. I um, fabricated this box, basically a standard box, but with two sides. I house all of my toilet paper and 
um, composting material, I choose to use coconut core and I have a urine diverter in the under the toilet seat so it separates liquids from solids and the whole nine yards. Y'all probably already know about all of that. But yeah, so this was one of the first things I built for the bathroom. So the wallpaper behind me, I originally had a different vision for the bathroom. I was going to do something floral and I kept coming back to this because it's an eye-catching pattern, but once you look closer, it's all little bugs and beetles. And I got it from spoonflower.com, which is based out of Raleigh, North Carolina. So this is my closet. It was another piece I got from Habitat for Humanity. It was a $10 pantry and it was in really rough shape. I had to make a new door and I put a backing on it. So I used pegboard in the back so I could hang different items. So there's a little peek. And I had to downsize from a full-size closet. I lived in a house, so it had double doors wall to wall and um, it was it was a long several months of downsizing like every month I would go through and then go through again and then I turned my hang hangers backwards and it's like whatever I didn't use in a few months had to go. Welcome to my bedroom. Um, I chose to just keep the mattress that I had been using for the past several years and I reused my bed slats from my old bed and just constructed the platform and I have my water heater back here as well as like some little things from home on my shelves to remind me of um, where I'm from and who I love and it's kind of my little sanctuary back here. I have everything that I like to hang out with. I have a chandelier, I have my little LED sign back here, my, um, an extension of my gallery wall and it's just a really nice place to come and relax. All right, so since being on the road, um, I will say that trying to find resources and filling up water, dumping gray, getting propane, all of those things that just are taken for granted in a house are a little bit stressful to try to find and time when to do all of that stuff. Like, oh, I'm getting empty, now I need to look for water resource, or oh, my gray tanks are getting full, I need to look for somewhere to dump. So I think that's one thing I miss is just the instant, like it's already available, it's a no-brainer and you don't even have to plan about it. So as a solo female traveler, I get the question a lot, did I have help with the build? I did have my dad, um, I was building out the bus in their driveway um, during the pandemic. So he has a whole basement full of tools and he has the knowledge to um, help me with certain things and he would get me started on projects but I took it from there and continued on and completed the build mostly on my own. Certain things I couldn't do on my own, like welding, so he was pivotal in doing the back deck and welding the table and certain things like that, as well as electric. All right, so this is my living area. My couch is um, a little bit deeper than most just because it's shorter I compensated with depth so I could crisscross or hang out you know with my dog and have plenty of room and everything upholstery related was sewn by me so I wanted to make sure that everything matched up and all my patterns um, were consistent so I sewed the couch cushions and I got the foam for free which was awesome because if you know, upholstery foam is very expensive and uh, that meant I could splurge on the fabric a little bit and I wanted something different, so leopard print, here we are. And uh, the couch also pulls out into an L shape, into a bed, it lifts up for storage and then I also have a table that folds forward. And I kept this space open because I wanted to be able to host people and be able to hang out with room, especially because I have a shorter bus. I wanted an area where I didn't feel cramped or closed in. Yeah, so I sewed those with black on the back so they were blackout reflectix on the inside. And then I also um, picked a pattern that I thought was cohesive with the leopard, but also still fun, red eucalyptus. So this is my gallery wall. I've had this tiny painting collection for six, seven years now, and it was the one thing I was not willing to get rid of on the road. So thankfully it was a tiny collection and I was able to fit it on my the back of my bathroom wall and the re rest of the collection is back by my bedroom. 
So in addition to keeping the space open, I decided to add two hooks into the rib, ribs of the bus roof and I can put a hammock chair so this way when the handicap door is open and folds flat, I can sit in my hammock chair and hang out and enjoy the view. Anyone building out a bus will tell you that it's a huge learning curve and with all the new things that you have to take on, it's hard to just know everything and do everything yourself. And so asking for help is not um, shameful. It's not you know, something that you shouldn't be doing. And I think anybody building out a rig um, appreciates knowledge and help from other people when they're building. So I really appreciate the um, knowledge that my dad was able to bring to the table and that I did have him as a resource versus having to constantly go to YouTube or talk to other people in the community. But that is a great resource for those of you who don't have somebody like my dad who knows about construction and electrical and plumbing. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more of the process of the build, go check it out at Wayfinder the Bus on Instagram and on Facebook. You can also find my photography page at Heidi Brickhouse on Instagram. And if you like any of the paintings or murals in my bus, I'd be more than happy to come and paint on your bus. So just reach out via DM and I'll get back to you.